So the next game we'll be talking about is Scott the Wasp's favorite game of all time, Super Mario Galaxy. And although I am a Sunshine fan, yeah, this game is simply near phenomenal. I love Super Mario Galaxy, and I don't know a single person who doesn't. As you know, gravity has gone completely buck wild, and I mean, Newton was a lie anyway, so I don't really care. You basically become God and just ignore the laws of physics completely. You can walk around planets. I don't remember selling my soul for that, but what else does this game add? It adds a spin jump, which is by far one of the best moves Mario's had aside from the dive. Not only can it, does it help you recorrect the jump, which it's very obvious to mess up jumps in 3D space, but it's also balanced. Once you use it once in the air, you can't use it again until you land. And after you use it even like for like an attack or something, there's a bit of delay before you can use it again. So you do need to take in consideration when you should use it and when you shouldn't. I never thought they'd add strategy for a freaking spinning move of all things, but hey, I appreciate it. The music. What the heck can I possibly say about the music that hasn't been said a million times? It's fantastic and by far one of the best Mario soundtracks of all time. Tied, if not better, than Galaxy 2. You want to know what else this game has? Fantastic level design. Yep, I mean, what a shocker, right? Oh my gosh, Super Mario Galaxy has fantastic levels. Yeah, yeah, it does. I absolutely adore the level design here. I just absolutely adore it. What else did I not talk about yet? Oh yeah, this game introduced Rosalina, a waifu that literally every adult is in love with. And it also introduced Lumas and Honey Queen, everyone's favorite addition to this game. With everything I said, I give Super Mario Galaxy a rating of a 9.5 out of 10. Why does it not get a 10 out of 10? I don't know, I just like Sunshine more. I only give, I only give 10 out of 10s to my favorite Mario game of all time, which like I said is Sunshine. But don't get me wrong, this is my third favorite Mario game of all time. Third favorite, only getting beat up by Galaxy 2, which I'll get to soon, and of course Sunshine. But yeah, this game is simply phenomenal, and I am so glad I'll be able to enjoy it once again, portably, in Super Mario 3D All-Stars. So the next game we'll be talking about is New Super Mario Bros. Wii. And I'm just going to be honest, and I'm going to go out and say it. This is my favorite 2D Mario game. Why? Nostalgia. Yeah, this is the first 2D Mario game I've ever played. Actually, I don't know. It could be this or New Super Mario Bros. DS. But I have more fond memories of this. This is the one I would constantly play and get angry at whenever I got a game over. God, I sucked when I was younger. But this game has a very good story. The gang hangs out, and then bam, Peach gets captured by getting a cake thrown on her. Don't know how physics apply to that, but okay. Unoriginal story aside, this game has so many great things about it. First, let me just talk about the new power-ups, because this game by far has the best new power-ups of any Mario game out there. The propeller mushroom is fantastic. A quick shake of the Wii Remote, which I don't think is obnoxious like other people do. And you get a quick burst of movement up, and then you can shake to slow your descent down, and you can even press down on the arrow key if you want to absolutely just slam down. Oh, man, I did not mean to phrase that word like that. Anyway, and there's also the penguin suit, which is basically just better ice flower, which I'll get to the ice flower in a bit. So for the penguin suit, I think you walk slower on land, kind of like effects of the frog suit, but you swim really well underwater, and you can belly slide across the ground, which is fantastic. I don't really understand why the penguin suit needed the ice ball power up though, because the penguin suit still was pretty good without it. And of course, now the ice flower. Wow, why? How did it take so long for Nintendo to implement a power up like this? I get it was in Mario Galaxy, but the, the way it works here is completely different. It's basically just an opposite to the fire flower, and I love it. But my biggest question is why the heck is the ice flower not in Mario Maker? Other than that weird decision from Nintendo aside, let me talk about the level design. It is fantastic. I love the level design in this game. Sure, the gimmicks may not be that unique, but I still really love it. The, they don't have to have unique gimmicks. I do appreciate it when they do, but for games like this, simple level design works because even though it's simple, just the design of them and some there are some aspects to them that are unique, don't get me wrong, but they are most similar to New Super Mario Bros. DS where they don't really have that many new gimmicks, but they still have enough to keep most of the levels entertaining. I really like that one in the forest where you gotta ride the skulls without letting enemies touch it. I really, really like that one. 
Want out else I really like? Multiplayer. And New Super Mario Bros. Wii makes me hate and love multiplayer. Man, I never thought I'd ever say that. But yeah, multiplayer is some people's torture and some people's blessing. I have never played multiplayer. Yep. Actually, no, that was a lie. I have. I did it at a friend's house, and it was absolutely the most chaotic thing I've ever experienced in my life. I think I got a seizure from playing that. The boss fights are the Koopalings, which... Ugh! Just kidding. I, I'll allow them here. I'm, I, I don't like them here. I'm not gonna use a picket sign on them, because this is the first time we've actually seen them in quite a long time when this game came out. The last game we saw them in was Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga, and calling that a main Mario game is a lie. The boss fights are pretty fun, and... They are pretty fun. They may be similar to some others in the new Super Mario Bros. series, but for this being the first one to bring back the Koopalings and, ha and make give them their own unique gimmicks and stuff like that, the newer new Super Mario Bros. Ga games will copy, I'll allow it here, because solely because this is, be is the game that made them bring brought back into the modern era, so I'll allow it here. So, And the music is pretty much your happy-go-lucky Mario music. So with all that said, with fantastic boss fights, fantastic level design, Fantastic level gimmicks, absolutely fantastic, but also rage-inducing multiplayer. I give this game a 9.5 out of 10. This is my favorite 2D Mario. I know it's because of my nostalgia, but I don't care. I'm a rebel anyways. So, yeah, I absolutely adore this game. And if, you, if you're discriminating this game just because it's a new Super Mario Bros. game, then play it, and you'll actually realize how fantastic it really is. Next we got Mario Galaxy 2, and wow, they should really rename this to Mario Galaxy 1.5. I'm gonna be honest, nothing really screams sequel or oh evolution about this one. But to be fair, it's not gonna really need to be. One, it'd probably have to be on a more powerful console like the Switch in order to make it feel different from the original. Plus, I mean, what really needed that much changing with Mario Galaxy to begin with? I mean, I mean... It's literally just more Galaxy 1, but I mean, that's pretty much what everyone would want for a sequel anyway. Nintendo would probably get absolutely sued if, if they did anything aside from that. But, alright, Super Mario Galaxy 2. I'll give time for my introduction of why I like Super Mario Galaxy 2 better than Mario Galaxy 1. One, I think the level design is better. Two, I, there are more unique galaxies in this game than Galaxy 1. Three, introduce new power-ups. Four, Cloud Flower. Five, Yoshi. 6. Thick Yoshi 7. Light Yoshi 8. Sonic Yoshi 9. Starship Mario Yeah, I know people like the Common Observatory much more, but I'm more of a Starship Mario kind of guy. There's much more to do in this one than the Common Observatory could ever do. Yeah, this thing is the size of a freaking dime compared to the Common Observatory, but there's much more to do here. Yeah, everything does look a little cramped, but yeah. Can I also say I like I prefer the world map in Galaxy 2 to Galaxy 1? I feel like in Galaxy 1 it was just the levels being organized in like this little dome. I think that was kind of annoying. Instead, you have all the levels here organized in just like one spot and you just go to world. I think that makes things much more simple, but in turn makes it much easier to get to levels. And that's what that's my little segment of why I like Galaxy 2 more than one. But how do I rate this game compared to the other Mario games and excluding Galaxy 1? I give it a 9.9 out of 10. Yes, I know that I'm only doing 0.5 most of the time, but I'm being a rebel again, so I don't really care. Yeah, I'd say this is better than Galaxy 1 in every single way. I love Yoshi, the Cloud Flower, the level design more, the music is pretty much on par, if not slightly better. They put all the best aspects of Galaxy 1 into this game, and it paid off. But one thing, why the heck is this not in 3D All-Stars? So the next thing I'll be talking about is Super Mario 3D Land. I have a lot of nostalgia towards this game. As it being the first 3D Mario game I've ever played, it introduced me to this type of Mario. Not the open world ones, it took me till Mario 64 DS to get to that point. But it introduced me to this type of 3D Mario, this, aka the 3D Land, Galaxy, and 3D World. And I like how this game really just tells you that it that it's supposedly Super Mario Land, but in 3D just by looking at the title. But it's its own unique thing. I'm glad about that. Anyway, I really like this game. I think the level design is absolutely fantastic. And although this game may not really have any unique gimmicks to it, like some other Mario games do, I'm personally alright with that. The point of this game was to be kind of like Galaxy, and it's, it's basically a mix of Galaxy and the new Super Mario Bros. series. 
which personally I'm alright with. And don't act like this game doesn't have its own unique things, because it d does. Unlike Galaxy, this is kind of its, orig its own original take on 3D Mario. So there is that, that is completely unique kind of 3D Mario. It, it, it brought the Tanuki suit back. Got the Tanuki leaf, that's kind of lame. But the Tanuki suit, suit is still a great addition. It introduced boxes like the coin box and the propeller box. I don't really like either of them, but at least it's something it introduced. And I really like the clock theme. There's just something great about clock themes in Mario games that, that I can't really describe. And this game has a boatload of content. It's got 16 freaking worlds in it. Oh, oh, you don't think eight's enough for you, huh? All right, well, let's get the up the ante with 16. Yep, there's basically 16 worlds. Of course, you go through the first eight to rescue Peach and all that. But then you go through eight special worlds. I think those are pretty much just remakes of the of the levels from the first from the first eight worlds, but made harder. I personally like that because you know I like challenging my Mario games. And oh yeah, did you know there's actually a reason to go through all the eight worlds? Okay, not all eight of them, but at least one of them. Because you get to actually unlock Luigi, and that just boosted my rating by like 10 points up just for that. But yeah, I really like the level design. The game introduced this kind of 3D Mario. The bosses, eh, are pretty lame. It's literally just Boom Boom, and it's literally just Pom Pom, and it's literally just Bowser. Yeah, that that's basically all you get. Heck, Bowser Jr. doesn't even show up in this game, nor the Koopalings. The Koopalings I'm okay with, but Bowser Jr. is quite odd. So, yeah, I personally give this game a 9 out of 10. I think it has great level design, great music. It has, it introduced this type of 3D Mario, which I personally do like this type of 3D Mario. And the power-ups are honestly good in it. There may be a lack of some, but it's the, the power-ups they do have are still good. And this game has a lot of content. I mean, 16 freaking worlds, you can't argue with that. I hope you're all excited to see me take a dump on New Super Mario Bros. 2. Now, let me just explain why I, I don't really like this game that much. 1. The level design is by far the most bland of the entire New Super Mario Bros. series. 2. They introduced the least new power-ups. The only thing they added was a gold fire flower. Big whoop de doo Yeah, I get that New Super Mario Bros. U only added the, the squirrel suit and all, which I'll get to in a bit. But at least... At least that they did, cared enough to make a better version of the squirrel suit. It's literally this one. This one new power-up is literally just an enhanced fire flower that has a spread of effect and turns everything it touches into coins. Yay! And although yes, it, at least this game does have a gimmick, but the gimmick is practically non-existent. It's just coin bonanza, and I don't really care. Collecting the coins is not really satisfying at all and doesn't change the gameplay at all which is something the series really needs to do and when it comes to the coins there should be a story of why there's so many coins and here's a here's a big problem that you will never ever get a game over in this game yeah i know mario games are pretty easy but why would they make getting a one-up still 100 coins there's like a thousand coins in each level all right that's a bit of an over exaggeration but not by much like, you can play this game for like five minutes, look at your live counter, and like, wow, when did I get infinite lives? The answer is, you did by playing the game. Yeah, you'll literally never get a game over unless you purposely get a game over, which I've actually tried myself. Don't do it, kids, it takes forever. But anyway, yeah, I think the level design's bland. I think the power ups they added aren't good. I like how the Mega Mushroom is even more useless than what it was in the DS version. And I, that's all I really have to say. There's not much for me to say, except that it new, it's basically New Super Mario Bros. DS, but with worse power-ups, more bland level design, and it was a new gimmick that's practically non-existent and adds nothing to the gameplay. With all this said, I have to give New Super Mario Bros. 2 a 5 out of 10. The re I, I've already explained my reasoning, but the reason it's not any lower is because I still can find some good stuff out of this game. I really like the coin rush mode and the DLC for it and all that. That mode I really like. But playing the main game is just eh. I'm not really that big a fan of it. So the next game we'll be talking about is New Super Mario Bros. U. This is basically just New Super Mario Bros. 2, except better. Like I said, this game did only introduce one new power-up, but unlike New Super Mario Bros. 2, 
This power-up is actually incredibly unique and functions in its own way, and it is quite fun to use. Of course, I'm talking about the acorn. The, in the acorn, if you grab it, you basically turn into a flying squirrel thing. I think that's what it is. And like I said, it functions in its own unique way. And like I said, there actually is an enhanced version of it called the pea acorn, where you could just fly for however the heck long you feel like it. I think the level design in this game is much better than the level design in New Super Mario Bros. 2. I also think that the, there are much more unique gimmicks than in New Super Mario Bros. 2. And I, and I think the bosses are better than in New Super Mario Bros. 2. I didn't talk about the bosses when I was doing New Super Mario Bros. 2 because I don't want to think about the bosses in New Super Mario Bros. 2. Why am I saying so much of New Super Mario Bros. 2? Anyway, so now stuff that I'm going to talk about that just has to do with this game and nothing with New Super Mario Bros. 2. I like how they brought Yoshi back. You still can't take him outside of the level you find him, and that's kind of odd. But, but here's the big new addition. Baby Yoshis. Eh, they're alright. I mean, they don't really add that much. Sure, there are different kinds. I mean, I like the blue one the most because he sp he's, um, spits out bubbles. I think that's pretty cool. And he can trap enemies in it. The pink one can fly. It's basically just like a nerfed version of the squirrel soup. Because although, yes, you can fly longer, you don't go near as much distance with it. And then there's the yellow one that's basically just a, a actual living light block from New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Don't really get why that exists, but okay. But... Yeah, I think the most notable difference of the Baby Yoshis is that they actually had Humming to the Background song, which is the cutest and best thing I've ever imagined in life. So, yeah, there's not really that much for me to say about this game. It's just better New Super Mario Bros. 2. So, with all this said, I have to give it an 8.5 out of 10. It's basically a, a, just a middle-of-the-road Mario game. Better than New Super Mario Bros. 2, but worse than the first two New Super Mario Bros. games. It is still quite fun... But it definitely could have been a much more unique experience if they just changed the formula a little bit. Alright, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not that big a fan of 3D World. Don't get me wrong, it still is a great game at all. But I don't know, it's eh, just not really my thing. I know I said I really like 3D Land and this style of 3D Mario, which is true. But I don't know, there's just something really off about this one to me. I don't really know what it is. I'm just not that big a fan of it. Like I said, I still think the game is great, and I'm very much going to buy Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Furry on the Switch. So, yeah, th so take into consideration that, that even though this is probably my least favorite 3D Mario, I'm still going to buy it on the Switch, so at least that means something. I don't know. There are much more new, unique level gimmicks here than there were on 3D Land. I think the power-ups are better, plus they had the cat suit, which was literally the best thing ever created. The music's absolutely incredible, too. I'd say it's much better than 3D Land's. It's basically just a better version of 3D Land. You might be wondering, oh, why don't you like it more? And honestly, I have no idea. I think I'm just so used to 3D Land and how the way that game plays and the levels and that that I guess I just don't accept these games' levels. I don't know. I don't really have much explanation. I just prefer 3D Land more. I know... 3D World is the better game, but I don't know. I personally just prefer 3D Land. And, oh yeah, there's five freaking characters in this game. Like, oh my gosh. Sure, they're the same ones from Super Mario Bros. 2, with Rosalina being the exception, because she wasn't even created by the time Super Mario Bros. 2 came out. Oh boy, that was a mouthful to say. With all this said, I give Super Mario 3D World a rating of an 8.5 out of 10. Like I said, it is the better game compared to 3D Land, but I just like 3D Land more simply because... I'm so much more used to that game and enjoyed that game more just because I played that one first. I know I'm a nostalgic guy, okay? In other words, yeah, this definitely is a better game than Super Mario 3D Land, but I don't know. There's just something off about it. But when Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury comes out, you better know I'm buying that for the online multiplayer, baby! Actually, I'm going to cancel the video because it's time for me to look outside my daily window. Oh, look over there. That must be the Mario Odyssey community trying to kill me because they don't think it's the best 3D Mario game. Eh, that's not out of the ordinary. In all seriousness, though, the next game we have and the last game we have is Super Mario Odyssey. And, oh my gosh, this is not my favorite 3D Mario game. From the way I said that, it makes it sound like I don't love Odyssey. I do. But it's not as good as other people say it is. Alright, let me explain my negatives. Actually, never mind. I'm going to talk about the positives first. 
One, the level design. The level design is simply incredible. I love the level design. I love, love, love that level design. Oh my gosh, why did I say it like that? It made me sound like a creep. And another thing I love is the move variety that Mario has. With Cappy, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna get to Cappy soon. He adds so many more unique moves to the game that just make controlling him as a whole extremely fun. Oh, I, now it's time for me to talk about Cappy. This ghost hat with eyeballs changes everything in the game. You can capture literally anything you see. You wanna capture a big stretchy caterpillar? Throw your hat at it and you can do that. You wanna become a frog? I'm not joking, an actual frog. You can do that too. Capturing is a very, very unique idea. Oh, and it's not just some kind of gimmick that adds stuff to the game. All right, kind of. It's literally, the whole game is based around it. I mean, sure, Mario Galaxy and Mario Sunshine had that too, but it feels most prevalent in this game. But what I really like is that you don't have to go one specific way to go places. Since the, the kingdoms are designed so well that you can go anywhere you want in any way. Like, you want to go past the hills in Luncheon Kingdom? Alright, sure, you could just go around, but you could also climb over the damn mountains if you want to, if you're a rebel like me. And there's another thing I should mention, the graphics. I know people normally would say stuff about Galaxy, and yes, those are fantastic graphics, but oh my gosh, the graphics just look great here. Especially in Lost Kingdom. Another thing that I really like about this game is a story. Yes, oh, Peach gets kidnapped. What a unique idea. All jokes aside about that, though, the story actually goes much deeper. I like how Cappy actually has a reason to helping out Mario because his sister got captured. But seriously, though, can they not have come up with something more original? But what I really like is that we got confirmed confirmation that Mario's a simp. Yeah, I really like that. Mario literally just got rejected by Peach. I, I think it would have been funny if Peach just rolled off of Bowser and then Bowser just waved at Mario. I, I think waved by at Mario. I would think that would have been pretty funny. But the fact that she just rejected Mario makes me really interested to see what's actually going to happen in the inevitable Super Mario Odyssey 2, which I'm totally going to buy and I'm totally going to enjoy. So what are my negatives of Mario Odyssey? Well, a lot of the moons in the game feel very, how do I say it, non-existent, if that's the right word to use. What I basically mean by this is that a lot of the moons in the game feel like filler. I, I get that they're trying to bring it out to 999 moons so you can have a lot to do. But when the moons start feeling really less valuable near the end, it only feels like such a slog to get them all. And I know that's only for the true completionist, and I'm not. But it's so obvious that they're just making a bunch of unoriginal moons. I can only think of like 25% of the moons as being completely original. All the others are just, oh, it's one, it's hidden somewhere. Two, you have to ground pound in this stupid spot, which I absolutely hate. Three, they're either casino stuff. Or four, they're, bon they're pretty similar bonus rooms. I really do like the bonus rooms, but some of them are so similar to each other that I'm not really that big a fan of that. But the bonus rooms is a whole great idea. The execution, it's all right. And the music isn't really that good either. Definitely on the weaker end when it comes to music in Mario games. I really like Cascade Kingdom. Metro Kingdom's good. Lost Kingdom's also pretty decent. Jump Up Superstar is fantastic. And... I don't know what the song's name is at the end where you go through the path as Bowser, but I really like that song too. But yeah, that's pretty much all I can think of. The music isn't that great if I'm being honest. But those are pretty much my only negatives. Overall, this is an incredibly built together game and I still love it to this day and I definitely play it a lot. So with all this said, I have to give Super Mario Odyssey a rating of a 9.5 out of 10. I may not enjoy it as much as other games that I put at a 9 out of 9.5, but I definitely think this is one of the best Mario games. It may not be one of my favorites, but I definitely do think it is one of the best Mario games. And definitely one of the most built together ones at that. I'm done. I'm finally done with that. Anyway, now that I'm done with, I'm finally done with all the Mario games. So I can finally take a break now. Wait, Super Mario All-Stars is coming on Friday and I have to make an anger video on it before Nathaniel Bandy does so I can actually get views on it? Dang it! Well, anyway, jokes about that aside, 
plus the foreshadowing. So what did you guys think of this video? Do you agree with my opinions? Do you disagree with my opinions? Let me know in the comment section down below. I really respect all comments. And if you like this video, why not leave a like on it and subscribe to my channel for more content like this in the future. Just going to let you know, I'm going to be making a compilation of this. And this part I'm saying about the compilation will be cut out in said compilation. So there's also going to be three extra games that I didn't include in part one and two. So you should definitely watch it if you... If you if you think if you think it's just gonna be the same, no, it's gonna be different. So be sure to watch that if you're if you like these. So thank you guys for watching. See you soon. Later.